Apple is known for its sleek and innovative web designs, and it's established itself as a leader in the web design space. Now, I've designed some of the websites and landing pages for Apple.com, and I've learned some of their trade secrets when it comes to web design. So I wanna share Apple's top five web design principles with you so that you can design websites like Apple does. All right, the first design principle that Apple is so well known for is their confident and their prevalent use of white space. So much to the point where if somebody tells you to clean it up or make it breathe, a lot of times you'll hear them say, can you just make it a little bit more Apple-y? If you look at any one of Apple's websites here, I'm on the iMac page. Yes, they have images. Yes, they have grids, but check out this spot where they just embrace and apply drastic amounts of white space, hyper-focusing on little pieces of text and gorgeous shots of their products. Here's another example on the AirPods Max page. We're getting a giant big imagery or video. We even have here typographic kind of layouts. We have giant commitment here to white space so you can really focus. And this is really, really easy to do as you're designing, not only designing, but also building your websites as well. You can see I have recreated the AirPods Max website inside of Wix Studio. And if I'm looking at this page and I'm saying to myself, I just need a little bit more white space between this text and the bottom. I mean, it's as simple as just grabbing and dragging and adding some more of that white space. You can move these things around. You could also, if you want to, instead, you could grab certain elements in between between and inside of Wix Studio, you can just move around the padding and the spacing there and everything will just auto correct itself. The second design principle that Apple is committed to and that you should be as well is what they refer to as marketing moments. These are these large moments, impressive moments that are purely there to emphasize the point of the site. In their case, it is to sell. When we reload the AirPods Max website, we get this nice marketing moment. It's a smooth transition, a little bit of animation, and you know, you might say, hey, get me to the content, get me to the price, but Apple says slow down. Let's just give you an experience. Also, as you scroll down through these areas, you're gonna find more of these marketing moments. We're now marketing marketing and focusing on these fun little moments where we're showing features and highlighting certain aspects. And so building out some of these fun little marketing moments is crucial. Again, it's super easy to do. I'm inside of Wix Studio. I've added in a layout with my navigation and I have my big text in the background. All I have to do is grab my image, my element, my text, whatever you want, move up to the top right and go to the interactions panel and we can add scroll animations, entrance animations, all sorts of different things. You can see I have an entrance animation here on my text. I have a scroll animation here on my headphones and the whole container that it's locked in is also floating on entrance or on page load. You can see that I've loaded up my Apple AirPods website recreation here. When I refresh, I get that nice little moment and on scroll, I even get a little bit of growth out of my headphones. I'm doing all of that right here in Wix Studio inside of the interaction panel. Super easy to do. The third principle that Apple is a really big fan of is video and movement. Not overusing it, but using it for a specific purpose to keep your interest and continue to move you down the page. And so when there starts to become a time when there's been maybe a lot of text, a lot of information, they're going to immediately implant some sort of video or movement of some kind to keep your interest peaked. We can see the iMac page here. We get that beautiful marketing moment. It makes me really, really interested, right? My iMacs are moving in and I'm starting to read a lot. I'm starting to get a lot of stuff, just small little bits of movement, small pieces of video. Okay, now I'll get some static images, static images. Oh, there's some more movement, doing a little bit of scroll hijacking, a little bit of animation here. And this stuff is really easy to do inside of your no code builder like Wix Studio. You can see as I scroll down, I've just inserted a nice back background video inside of Wix Studio. All you have to do is load it up here, change your media, make sure that it's looping and just kind of set things accordingly. As I scroll down even more, I can get some animation, some movement out of my headphones and on and on we go. So let's just preview this and see what we've done. I'm gonna reload my website that I've built inside of Wix Studio. Again, we get that fun interest in animation and movement as we scroll down. Beautiful background video that highlights what we're talking about, this high fidelity audio. And then as I scroll down even more, I get these big, beautiful typography sections 
but there's some more movement from my headphones. And as I scroll down, I've even combined a static image with a background video. So the whole thing is looping and we get this really cool experience. It's just that little bit of video that I built inside of Wix Studio here. You can see I have an image and I have a video behind it playing. But make sure that you're adding just a little bit of video and some of that movement the peak interest. The fourth design principle that Apple is huge on is slightly connected to the last point of video and animation, but it's how you use video and animation. Not only should it be there to peak interest, but it's also there to help you tell the story or build a narrative experience. Here's an example. We're back on the AirPods Max page. And as I scroll down, we get some of that beautiful video, but my text is starting to tell a little bit of a story. So this is kind of combining all of these principles in one. We want to have this big white space area, these large marketing moments that are gorgeous. We also want to have video and movement, but look, we are telling a story, not only with the video, but the video is adding to it. Same thing here. We're going to use movement to kind of move you in and engage you. And look, we're starting to tell a story about the build of the headphones, the arms of the headphones. So we're telling a story of value here. Now we're going to move into some static images and then onto that rotating piece, right? And it's all about the digital crown. So this isn't just video and shapes and cool 3D stuff for the sake of design. All of it is built to actually create a narrative story that you can walk away as a customer fully understanding. The last design principle that Apple are huge advocates of revolve around layouts. All layouts discussed and designed at Apple have to be two things. They have to be structured, but they have to be exploratory. So they can't just be reusing and rehashing the same old things. They want to add some moments of interest into their layouts. Here's some great examples. Again, we're back here in the uh, AirPods Max website, we get these beautiful centered images and it almost feels like our text is sporadically placed around it. It's technically on a grid. We're just being a little bit experimental with our layout. The same thing goes with our image layouts that we have here. We have these almost like masonry grids. They are staggered. They're not perfectly defined, but look how we have beautiful space. We have gutters and margins and paddings. We're back inside of our AirPods Max recreation. I'm building this with Wix Studio. And as I scroll down, you can see we have our layout, our text layout here. And we know that on the AirPods Max layout that the typography is over on the other side. Instead of having to recode this and do everything, Wix Studio just allows me to drag and drop it. And then if I can even open up my panel and I can get some responsive resizing, docking, margins, padding to really make sure that I'm dialing those elements in. Here's another really great example of creating layouts inside of Wix Studio that are very Apple-esque. We have this image grid layout that we created here, and all we had to do was come in and quick add, jump down to layout tools, and instead of grabbing one of these like really gridded sections here, Flexbox side by side, we just grabbed one of these mix match kind of like uh, layouts, pop that in, and then you can actually, you know, remove or add different elements. So all I did was come in here and delete that, and then I grabbed in my layers panel, I went to the entire section itself. I opened up my contextual panel and this is where inside of our collage, we were able to equalize the grid. We're able to add different gaps to everything. So maybe 20 pixels there, 20 pixels there. All of a sudden my grid comes alive and that is exactly what I did to create this beautiful photo image down or photo collage down below, doing all of that without writing any code. But again, very, very Apple-esque, here it is all built out inside of my no-code tool. Well, there you have it. Those are five of the most important design principles that were impressed upon me during my time with Apple. And honestly, once you understand these five trade secrets and start to apply them inside of your no-code design tool of choice like Wix Studio, then it's really, really easy to start making stunning websites. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you know when more videos on web design like this one come out. And also, why don't you check out one of these videos about web design, and I'll see you in the next one.